Tom here from Orange Systems. This is the Unify UCG Fiber, and it has a lot of ports, but when it was released, only two of those ports could be used as WAN. Now with the soon to be released Unify Network Application 9.1 here in April of 2025, we can now assign more ports as WAN on this model and many others. In this video, I'll be covering the many new features available and showing you how they work. And if you're looking to get your hands on some Unify gear or build out your next server, check out the sponsor of today's video, Micro Center. They have Apple savings going on all month long and Priority Care Plus, providing you with peace of mind for all of your devices, no matter where you purchase them from. Sign up for Priority Care Plus and have unlimited access to Micro Center's techs, experts, and free diagnostics. There's more information in the description below. If you're on the West Coast, keep an eye out for the Santa Clara location opening soon. Now, I'll leave a link in the description to the release notes, but there is one thing I will mention that I'm not going to be covering in this particular video, which is their traffic flows. It does require Unify OS 4.28 or newer. This is the ability to view traffic flows directly in Unify. It's obviously a very welcome feature, but until the base OS is fully released, which should be soon, I'm going to skip covering it, and maybe I'll do that in a dedicated video in the future. Let me know in the comments down below. Now, the first big change in quality of life improvement here is how we do port management. We have this switch, and if I want to power cycle any particular port, I can simply click on it. Click proceed, it'll power cycle that port. If we go into the port manager, this has been redesigned as well. It's been a little bit clearer now because it makes it easier to select quite a few ports, make a group of changes, and all the port options now come up on the side as opposed to the way they did before where they scrolled down below. The problem I always have when you scroll down below is sometimes it was harder to see all the options. Now, going back to the devices and pulling the switch back up, you can see the details for the SFP modules plugged in for each switch. But there's never, until now, been a way to see all of them at once. Now we have this new feature called the SFP Analyzer. It's a view on the ports page here that allows us to see all of the SFP modules and all the details about them, including your serial numbers, temperature, or any other information that they are sharing with Unify. So instead of having to mouse over each port individually, you can see them in group here, and you can also filter for ones that are in a bad state. And I purposely plugged this one in without a receive. And when you click on this, it brings up the menu to show you any of the changes you may want to make to that particular port without having to go back to the main menu. Now let's talk about adding more than two WAN ports. They made this really simple. This whole menu has been redesigned from the way it used to look. And now we can add a WAN and we'll call this one, for example, ISP number two. We can select, uh, why not port two? and click Apply Changes. And then let's do that again. We'll call this one ISP number three, and maybe we want it on port three, and we'll hit Apply Changes. And as you notice, they're all showing up down here. So now you can do failover or load balancing. You can choose how you wanna wait the first two or change this all the way to four and weight them all equally. So they've not just included the ability to add them, but included them into the plans for your WAN mode or your failover modes. And I also like, and we'll apply this really quickly here, when we choose the WAN, we can quickly switch ports again. So if we wanna switch it to a different port, it's just a simple pull down without having to actually edit any of this. But of course, as we go in here, we can get to the details. This is a feature I know a lot of people were asking about, especially because they have many ISPs because they're in rural areas and well, they have to go across several different connections or maybe they have policy routing that forces them to use different connections. But this is a welcome change and I really like the way they made this relatively simple to engineer. Now let's talk about firewall rules. This is a simple, but I think important change here. We have the ability to manage the rules and when we click on them, we can remove it. We can also duplicate it. I love the duplication option. If you have a rule that has a lot of details into it, you wanna apply it to another zone. You don't have to recreate the rule with all the same settings. You can simply click duplicate, edit the rule and apply it to the zone you want. This is gonna save a lot of time when you have sometimes rules like repeating Rust desk ports across different zones. And I think this is a great quality of life improvement. Now let's talk QoS. You can now set priorities for applications very simply with the menu here. I chose my biz apps prioritization of Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, et cetera, the apps that we have to use because both me and my wife work from home behind this particular firewall I'm showing you here. So I wanted to prioritize those apps and I don't like lagging gaming. So I chose online games as a category. It is easy to create new 
QoS options here, you can either prioritize or limit because maybe you want to limit how much traffic goes to a particular service. You can also prioritize and limit, make it high priority, but it will never go over a certain limit that you can set here. Now you can set the download limits and the upload limits. You also have the ability when choosing the apps to choose from the app list or categories. Categories are pretty broad. But of course, when you want to get specific, that's what allows me to do things like select Google Meet or YouTube or even Outlook, which I think is interesting. But you have the ability here, obviously, to get quite granular with it. They have quite a few applications in the list. Now, I do want to make note that in the documentation, it does contain this. When routing above one gig, enabling QoS can result in a 25 to 45% adjustment in performance. So users should consider their specific bandwidth needs when applying quality of service settings. This is a note if you have a really fast connection, but maybe you don't have a system that can keep up with it, but just wanted to point that out that this is in their documentation. Now, one of the new features they've added is the ability to replace a device. Previously, you would have done this by copying a configuration from let's say one switch to another. Now we have the ability to click on the switch click on the gear icon, go down here, set replacement device, and you can put the MAC address in and it will copy that configuration. You have a little mouse over here so you can see that it will copy the configuration to the new device. Once detected, the new device will automatically adopt and apply the settings. Replacement is limited to devices of the same model. Now let's talk about Wi-Fi changes. If we go down here on the Wi-Fi page, we notice that we have the ability for maximum speed or a more conservative setting. Generally, the conservative setting is about connectivity. So it gives you a narrower width versus maximum speed means pushing for a higher width, which is going to give you more bandwidth, but of course doesn't have the same range. This is not an easy choice to make, but it's now easier to apply it to all of your access points at once. This is especially important when you have a very large Wi-Fi deployment. You can say, I just want all of them to be this setting. And of course you can do custom and set each one of the channels to the width that you want. It will give you some warnings, of course, if you're gonna use the DFS channels at 160, but this allows you to change them all at once, which makes it of course much faster. Now, if you go over to insights, and an analyzer, Unify has enhanced this interface to allow you to have a longer history for a device to see the connectivity or any bandwidth that it's using. I've got it set to one day, but we can switch it to an hourly. We can even have a one month view. You can see the history of it connecting or disconnecting. Of course, this is a hardline device. And if we switch to something like my phone, it will give you all the roaming information. It'll give you the channel information that it was connected to and that same history. This is actually really great if you're trying to do some troubleshooting over time to figure out why a device is going where it is or which Wi-Fi is connecting to. And in my case, you can follow where my phone roamed between my different access points and also see how long it was connected for to each one. And the final change is Cloudflare has been added to the dynamic DNS. I know it's been requested by several people in the comments on my previous videos. I believe they've added a few more in here. So this list has gotten quite a bit bigger. Now this is not directly related to 9.1 at all, but this is a document called Secure by Design by Ubiquity. It is them being more transparent and telling you what's going on with their security. I think this is really cool because it gives you their design philosophy, which their minimal cloud dependencies, local data storage. And this question has come up many times of can can I adopt Unify without tying it to the Unify Cloud? Yes. What if the Unify Cloud goes down? Does my stuff still work? Yes. The edge first philosophy means even if for some reason the Unify Cloud isn't connecting or you do not want to use it, that's both options. If it's not connecting, you still have access locally. If you choose not to use it at all, that's part of their design philosophy is to keep offering that. I like that they put it in writing. It's not something that's a general feature that you have to ask about for each device. It's something that they're putting right here and being very clear about, including little things like disable it well, remote access is entirely optional, as in even if you adopt it first and decide to disable it later, that's possible. Something else of note, they do have a bug bounty program and a list of their sub processors. If you're not familiar with that term, this is all these sub companies that they also use, like the services, like they use Slack internally, they use different tools such as Zendesk or they're using Stripe for payments. So they're letting you know essentially if there's a problem with any of these companies, this is also where Ubiquity if they had to report because this is the web of trust that you build when you run a business. I use Slack myself and if there was ever a data breach at Slack that could affect me because data I have about clients is in Slack. We could talk about our clients. So these are those really interesting things that I'm glad to see that they're being very, very transparent about and having this page up to date. I'll leave this link down below. So I just think it's a nice feature for them to be much more forthcoming about how things are at Unified.
Now I covered the broad changes that I found particularly interesting, but there may be others in there you find interesting. That's why I left you the link so you can go through the entire change log. Now it's a release candidate now here, as I said, in April 2025, but that means it should be released any day now. And hopefully by the time you're watching this video, it is in full release. But I like hearing from you. What do you think of this update? What do you think of the Secure I design page? Do you think it's a good addition? I personally do, but hey, you may have a differing opinion and leave that opinion in your thoughts and comments down below. Head over to forums, forums.lawrencesystems.com they have a more in-depth discussion about this and other topic connect with the end of socials at lawrencesystems.com and like and subscribe to see more content from the channel all right and thanks